Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Robert from Islam for Europeans. Please like and subscribe to the channel. So I wanted to talk about um, the whole idea of the uh, buddy system uh, some mosques will try to employ uh, when trying to help out converts. Now, uh, this, this whole idea stems from the, um, uh, the prophetic model uh, in Medina in which the muhajirun, i.e. the people who emigrated, uh, made hijra from uh, Mecca to Medina, um, he would, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would pair each one of the muhajirun with one of the ansar. So the ansar are basically the helpers, and those are the people who converted to Islam uh, in Medina. Right? So, um, you know, at the time, you know, if we look at the, uh, the seer of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, and the years in Medina, um, this was incredibly effective in solidifying uh, and strengthening the, the entire heart uh, of the Muslim community as a whole uh, of the Ummah at the time in, in Medina. Right. So, you know, um, you know, so a lot of you know, Muslim organizations will, will look at this um, and that what they'll do is they'll try to copy and paste, um, you know, this this idea. Uh, in the you know the 21st century West, <clears throat> now, you know back in Medina, um, it, it was very effective, um, but we have to realize that Medina was a completely different situation uh, than the 21st century West, um, for several reasons. One, as I've stated before on this channel, M Medina was a city a city in and of itself. Um, you know, probably no more from like five to 10,000 people, right? And um, everybody lived together. Like it was in the middle of a desert. It had the same general culture, right? And, uh, you know, everybody ate the same food. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of, of visiting Medina back in 2012. Um, it has a particular vibe to it, uh, you know, that, that, that is true up until this day. Um, and, uh, you know, back in the prophet's time, everybody knew everybody, right? You know, like, as, you know, you have people converting to Islam and entering the fold of Islam in Medina, the whole city was aware, obviously, because Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the leader of the, of the city, um, that, you know, Islam was growing. And when you converted to Islam, you not, you not only were paired with uh, one of the Muhajirun, but also on top of that, you know, the whole culture was changing, right? So, you know, like your neighbor or your cousin uh, or your, uh, you know, mother, father, um, children, you know, would be co apparently converting to Islam at the same time. And just the whole uh, city was conducive to that. So, you know, it was the, you know, it was at, over time, what happened is that Islam was growing so fast that it created an environment where it was far easier to convert to Islam, right? Now that's a totally different situation um, than what we have here today in the 21st century, especially in, in large metropolitan areas. You have, you know, multiple cultures uh, living in multiple different neighborhoods. Um, they have their own particular cuisine, their own clothing, their own slang, their own uh, language, their own organizations, um, <clears throat> you know, and their own history with Islam. You know, like if you look at the African American community, their history with Islam is far more positive than you know um, people of European descent. You know, where Islam was seen as you know the historical and contemporary enemy, right? So that's one thing. I mean, it's it's a totally different situation, just in general, in terms of like you know the the city back in Medina and what we have nowadays. Secondly, we have to keep in mind that all of the muhajirun and all of the Ansar, they were all converts, every single one of them, right? So, you know, then these people knew, you know, the Muhajirun knew kind of the struggle of being a convert to Islam. So it was a lot easier to advise, uh, you know, the Ansar, even though, you know, Medina was a slightly different culture than Mecca, um, you know, it was still a lot easier to, um, you know, give advice um, or deal with or mitigate the relationship with them and their non-Muslim non-muslim family you know so that's that's another. and on top of that you have the prophet muhammad himself peace be upon him who who you know who's the leader of medina so they go directly to him whenever they had questions 
you know, compare that to, you know, today, you know, in trying to do this buddy system where they pair up a convert with a born Muslim, those are two totally, you know, they're coming from two totally different paradigms, two totally different, um, you know, situations, you know, a born Muslim in general does not have the life experience of understanding of what it's like to be a convert, right? And vice versa, you know, converts, many of them, uh, you know, unless they're, unless they're coming from other countries, don't understand what it's like being, uh, you know, an immigrant or first generation Muslim, you know? So, you know, how could you provide, you know, like solid uh, advice on how to deal with like your non-Muslim family and friends when you've never been in that situation before, right? Um, that brings me to my next point, and that is that, you know, generally, um, you know, and, you know, we, we polled people on converts on this, you know, what is the, 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 the biggest uh, challenge you have as a convert to Islam? And the number one response was um, mitigating or dealing with the relationship with your non-Muslim family and community, right? And I would say, by and large, um, mosques and Islamic organizations, um, they're not interested in this, you know, they don't have the desire to, um, you know, talk to your non-Muslim family and friends or, you know, enter their cultural spheres unless they come to the masjid, right? So, and as we know, like not every, many non-Muslim family members don't want to come to the masjid. Um, you know, it's a totally different territory. So you're basically living in two worlds. And what we find with this, with this buddy system is that usually the born Muslim in charge of, you know, like being this new convert's buddy often doesn't want to do that they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to talk to their non-muslim family and friends you know i mean from the get-go you should if you're going to create a program like this that has to be like a, a you know like a you know like a, a box you need to check off like are you willing to dialogue with your uh, with this converts you know family and friends and even if you do they might be in a situation where they're hiding islam from their family um they might be in a situation where they've told their family but you know, their family wants an out of sight, out of mind. They don't want to hear hear from other Muslims, right? Um, and, you know, they who knows? There could be a lot of, you know, two-way animosity, you know? Maybe someone, you know, wants to really help out converts, but they have a really negative attitude toward the converts' ethnic group in general. And putting them in the same room together might backfire, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, so on paper, it sounds good. You know, like, I mean... I'm sure there's some good things that come out of it. I mean, usually what will happen with these attempts is that, you know, uh, the born Muslim will end up, you know, calling this convert, you know, once a week or once every other week, say, hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? And, you know, invite them to come over to the mosque, right? So, I mean, there's some good that come out that can come out of it. I mean, uh, any communication is better than, than, than no communication at all. Um, but I really think it's it's a square peg, uh, square peg for a round hole, really, right? And you know, you you never see the inverse situation. I mean, you never see born Muslims saying they need help from converts, uh, you know, like and have them pair uh, with a convert because the whole uh, method of you know pairing one of the Ansar with one of the Muhajirun was that it was you know like um, they were helping out helping each other out, you know. Um, you know, like the Muhajirun, you know, they need to get integrated into a new community. And the Ansar, you know, they want to be integrated being a new Muslim. You never see born Muslims reaching out to converts or even, you know, people interested in Islam who are, you know, like almost converts and say, hey, you know, I need help. You know, I'm a new, uh, you know, I, I'm a new immigrant. You know, I'm just came from Syria or Iraq uh, or Somalia. And, you know, I need, you know, a convert to show me the ropes you know, like uh, talking about the culture here, um, you know, they don't do that. You know, what they do do is they have their own organizations um, or their own tight-knit communities uh, or their own relatives who are already here. And, and those are the ones that help them get acclimated, right? Why? Because they have, they've been in that situation before. They have firsthand experience, you know? So, and, you know, these organizations are heavily funded, you know, by, you know, the Canadian, by the, the government, Western governments, uh, nonprofit organizations, um, you know, private donations, um, you know, like uh, the, you have the Syrian Canadian Association, the Pakistani Canadian Organization, the Bosnian Canadian Organization, um, you know, and, and no Islamic organization ever says, you know, that, you know, these organizations are causing division, you know, that they need to be dismantled. Um, 
you know, this is just, it's just human nature and common sense. You know, you want people who are experts who have been in the same situation before helping you out, you know, and I think that's why, you know, you don't see an inverse situation where bored Muslims are asking converts for help. I mean, I know converts are very small in number, whereas the Ansar and the Mahajirun, you know, was pretty much, you know, 50, 50, right. <clears throat> so, you know, in conclusion, I, I know at, at, at best, you know, the whole buddy system, um, there are mild thing, mild positive things that may come out of it. Maybe it'll help someone go to a mosque, you know, if they're a convert, maybe it's a good reminder, um, you know, but in general, if you're not helping, you know, the convert out with their non-Muslim family and friends, I mean, it's just, it's just those type of problems are, are beyond the scope of Islamic organizations in general. And I think for the most part, um, we find with these buddy volunteers that, you know, their, their whole spiel is like, you know, yes, you know, they want to be established friendships with these, these converts, but, um, venturing out into your, into your, uh, into your non-Muslim sphere, that's usually something they don't feel comfortable doing and you can't blame them really. Uh, you know, um, you know, and generally, you know, if you look at the archetypes of people who convert to Islam, um, you know, very few of them would, you know, find benefit or just like, you know, uh, benefit of just having one buddy, uh, you know, to like help you go to the mosque. I mean, you know, like usually people who convert to Islam are usually one of, you know, but maybe four or five category types. You know, one is like someone who's already dating or engaged to um, uh, a bored Muslim. And, you know, they've converted or in the process of the convert of converting and converting. So they really don't need a buddy. They already have, you know, their, their BF or their GF or, you know, like um, uh, their fiance uh, or their newly married spouse, you know, to be the one to help integrate them into a Muslim community. Um, you know, you have other people who, you know, like dive right in, you know, they're single, but they dive right into an existing Muslim community. You know, they don't really need, you know, one buddy, they probably already made several friends already. Uh, they don't really need to designate someone, uh, you know, to, to be your buddy because they already, you know, they've already dove into an existing Muslim community. You know, you have the people who have taken their Shahada, but, you know, they haven't told, you know, their family uh, and friends and doing so would have serious negative consequences. You know, in that case, a buddy system wouldn't work out because, you know, they're hiding it from their family. So they have to be very secretive um, and calling them or texting them you know, that might actually let, let the cat out of the bag, right? Um, and then you have people who have converted to Islam. They've told their family, but, you know, they're uh, on edge with, you know, them. You know, they have to walk a fine line uh, and not talk about Islam, you know, because, you know, that's going to lead to them getting kicked out of the house um, or getting divorced or, or making them lose their job. And, you know, like, who knows, maybe talking to one of these buddies, you know, it might be the straw that break the cam breaks the camel's back. And then the next thing you know, you have, you know, a convert that's homeless, right? So, you know, like there's probably, you know, a few converts out there who might benefit from this kind of system. You know, maybe they're looking for friendship, you know, maybe they're, you know, they, they're shy, uh, but, you know, but, and they want to have someone that can like, you know, uh, be some to hold their hand, you know, to bring them to the mosque. In that case, it, you know, it might work. You know, but I think for the vast majority of people I've seen who've taken their shahada, I mean, um, you know, it's not that it's it's a bad idea. Um, you know, it's just ineffectual. It just shows that, like, you know, we don't really assess problems before engaging with solutions, right? We just copy and paste whatever they did in Medina, um, you know, and assume that that's that's going to work. But you know, when you step back and you take, you know, a a deep look at, you know, the issues that converts are facing and really, you know, the type of situations that born Muslims are in as well. Um, you know, the whole buddy system, you know, really doesn't address many of those issues. Right. So, you know, that's all the time I had for today. Um, you know, please uh, leave a comment in the, in the chat uh, if you have uh, comments on this situation. Also, I'll be interviewing uh, sister Milahan uh, coming up later this evening. So stay tuned for that. It'll be at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, Pacific Time. But uh, yeah, that's all I have uh, for now. I'm your host, Robert. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.